In this tutorial, I hope to help you understand normalized tables, and I have a series of videos on this. I'm going to show you how I get some numbers from the normalized table. I'm going to show you how it relates to the bell curve as well. In the back of every statistics book, there's a table like this, and along one column, you'll see C scores. A common value, and you'll see it often in statistics, is 1.645. And you'll notice there's not a 1.645, and you're right in the middle, right between these two values right here. So I take 0.9495, which is the first value, and I add that to 0.9505 to get 1.900. I divide this by 2, I'm taking the average of it, and this equals 0.950 or 95%. Another common value is 1.96, and you'll see there is a 1.96, which is 0 0.9750. Now I'm going to take these values and relate them to areas under the bell curve. You notice each of these bell curves has a different area highlighted. For the Z scores, the value we just looked up was for 1.645 was 0 0.9500, and other tables may have other values, like the I just put in there. There are other values between 1.645 and 1.96, but I'm going to discuss these two. 1.96 we just looked up, and it, the value there was 0 0.9750, and you'll see other tables with different values for 1.96. And what this means is there's different areas it's discussing and talking about. The 0 0.9500 is a blue area, and 1.645 is a critical value. The blue area, again, I'll put that back in. 95% of observations have a z-score less than 1.645. In other words, if I took a random sample, 95% of these random samples would have z-scores less than 1.645. Now if I move over that 1.645 and I look at the area between the mean, which is 0, the z-score is 0, and 1.645, let me shade that blue again, 45% of the observations have a z-score between 0 and 1.645. And finally on the same row, if I look at the last column, and now if I move that 1.645 over and I shade that area blue again, it turns out 5% of the observations have a z-score greater than 1.645. This 0 0.05, or the upper tail, what I'm looking at, the blue area, is also known as alpha, with the Greek letter alpha, or the p-value. Not 1.96, I'll do the same analysis, and 0 0.9750 of the observations, or 97.5%, have z-scores less than 1.96. It turns out that 0.475, or 47.5% of the observations, occur between 0 and 1.96. And now finally, 0 0.0250 or 2.5% of all observations are greater than 1.96, a z-score greater than 1.96. This 0 0.0250 is known as alpha, and it's also the Greek letter alpha, or the p-value, for a z-score 1.96. As my z-scores get larger, the area becomes larger as well because it includes a larger proportion or a larger percent. The same is true if I'm looking at between the mean and a z-score, the area becomes larger and larger as, it, as the z-scores become larger as well. But for the last one with that little tail right there, as the z-score becomes larger, the area and the tail becomes smaller and smaller. I have a series of videos on z-scores and on normalized tables, and watching those should help you out.